Um, thank you so much for um, our speakers today, Mohammed Ashour, who is the CEO and um, co-founder of uh, VTech Solutions and um, Spring Ring. And Spring Ring is, is uh, his new newest venture. We also have with us um, Mohammed Saad, who was also with us um, um, last week, thank you, Hamid, for this, who is also the CEO and founder of The Nourishers. To start the discussion by asking uh, both of our speakers to tell us more about themselves, about their businesses, um, how did they start their entrepreneurial journey, and then we can take the discussion uh, further. Um, uh, as uh, Dr. Asra, thank you very much for hosting us today. Um, um, Hamad Ashur, of, of course. Uh, so I basically run, as Dr. Asra mentioned, uh, two companies that I've founded. One is Vitek Solutions, which is basically a digital agency. Uh, and we just develop products, uh, digital products, so to speak. And my new venture, which is uh, basically the, what would be considered now a startup, is Spring Ring, uh, which is a school communication management platform. Um, just in general, um, and, and I'll just kind of start with uh, the beginning of the journey. I know this is the beginning of the program and the ideation stage uh, and how you kind of come up with your ideas and how you validate them and then how you actually implement them and go forward. Um, so we basically just talking about Spring Ring. Um, usually most people uh, come up with ideas based on problems that they identify, right? So either you come up with, uh, uh, face a problem yourself, or you see a problem, whether in your community or uh, your surroundings, and uh, you think that this is something that would go ahead and work. Um, just to kind of keep it brief as a, just an intro and then hopefully questions, but uh, a lot of times those ideas are just your own and the market does not agree with you. Uh, so you face a lot of these challenges. Uh, then when you go ahead and implement that idea, uh, you then face another issue, which is your idea might be good, but then the market doesn't agree with the way you've solved that problem. So then your product needs to be changed. Uh, and then the challenges are just uh, ongoing. Uh, so the most important thing for me uh, as at least an entrepreneur, uh, one big thing is not only perseverance in uh, how you, if you believe in your idea, then persevere to achieve it, but always listen to others. Um, be very flexible, be very agile, uh, accept criticism and feedback. Usually people and the market is very harsh. Uh, so just accepting that and moving forward and uh, taking, don't take things to heart, basically. Well, thank you. Thank you, Hamad. Uh, thank you, Dr. Estra, for having me again. And thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, I really enjoyed it last time. And at the last minute, everyone was you know, shooting a lot of questions. You know, there was a lot of interest, especially when it comes to the ideation, because we all are passionate to create something. And, you know, at this age, we're driven to um, do something with these uh, creativity that we have. And um, as I'll just want to point out one thing from said, uh, the emotional connection we have with these ideas. Um, a lot of us kind of believe in something so much that, you know, sometimes they don't give it um, a chance to, uh, they don't give themselves a chance to listen to others or they believe into something so much that they kind of um, um, ruin the opportunity of it to grow and actually, uh, become an actual uh, startup or let's say a business. Um, as a start, I would like to say um, I'm Hamad, Hamad al Saad, a health coach, um, uh, full time health coach. That's my profession. Um, um, I'm a, I started my business um, last year, so it's a COVID baby. Um, I was fortunate enough that I made use of the time that. Um, that the pandemic hit, I was able to invest all this um, time that everything was shutting down, everything was slowing down into manifesting, building and investing into my business. Alhamdulillah, we are here today because of that effort uh, and God's will. Um, so the idea came from the gap in the market that where I see, uh, where all of us could see that health is becoming a priority 
and there was a lack of um, reach or resources out there where people could find the right coaches or experts that would help them in, the, in, um, in their life. So that kind of gave birth to the nourishers where right now you have a platform that consisting, uh, consists of um, 300 plus coaches and experts from Bahrain and around, all around the world for you to work with just um, you know, one click away. So that's the idea behind my business. And um, as struggles, definitely there's a lot of struggles. Um, there's a lot of um, downfalls and there's a lot of um, beautiful um, rise ups be behind it. So please take the time to ask me and Muhammad uh, in regards to anything because, you know, like we are here, we went through all these challenges and we would like to give you the, uh, the manual or the shortcuts that would help you um, just avoid the challenges that maybe we faced. Thank you, thank you. Um, now, I think both of you, your your recent uh, Muhammad also was starting uh, around COVID-19 uh, time when, when everything was shut. So having the a different sort of environment for um, uh, business also um, provides opportunities for people that can take advantage of these opportunities. And of course, um, provide solutions that might not have um, been there before. So maybe if we can reflect just a little bit on, let's say, when a startup is faced with, let's say, a change in the environment, or when a startup thinks of an idea, should they be thinking about it like, okay, today we are in the era of COVID-19, and all right, the solution that I'm providing is going to apply now. Now, what if this changed later on? What if, inshallah, when we go back to normal, now, um, again, uh, as somebody starting a business, you want to be thinking about the change environment, going back to normal, how is it going to affect your business? So I'm sure that you have went through um, somehow of um, analysis when it comes to your business idea and how it is now and how is it going to be in the future. If you could um, reflect on that also. I received a, a question, I think, last time from a student particularly with this. Now, if I'm a solution applies to COVID-19, what's gonna happen to it later on? Uh, yeah, um, I think, um, you know, uh, Hamad started obviously during COVID uh, and, and solving obviously an issue there, but health is an ongoing issue uh, forever, <laughs> uh, as I can definitely testify to, uh, but so there, there's no fear on that. The, the thing is with, startups just in general so if i want to generalize a bit uh the thing is with startups is we are COVID is just a very kind of uh massive thing that happened to the world that everyone had to face but if we take it uh, at a smaller level every single startup will be facing externalities that they will have to deal with now it's uh, one thing to deal with the externality, so being agile in a sense, but you have to keep in mind with startups, it's always much easier to adapt to new circumstances than it is for, let's say, corporates, where approvals take tons of time, pivoting a whole company of 200, 300, 500, 1,000 employees is much more difficult than having two or three people and navigating uh, you know, rough waters with. Uh, so it is definitely easier for a startup to adapt. Now, uh, we've seen situations where with COVID, uh, a lot of the startups pivoted in a sense that they changed their business model and they overcorrected to respond to COVID. So what happened was they kind of moved away from their original idea, which was an idea that worked in general uh, in normal times and fully adapted it to COVID, whereas COVID will remain with us forever. Uh, so overcorrecting, and people should be aware of that, do not overcorrect when you face certain things. You have your core vision, your core idea. It's just about pivoting and adapting to times. Uh, one thing, if I take it more kind of personally here, um, with our situation, um, Sometimes opportunities arise where we didn't perceive them. 
uh, our uh, platform was created before COVID. So we created a platform that would facilitate school home communication. So between the school, the teachers, the administration of the school, and between parents and students at home. Now, we created that before COVID. When COVID hit, this platform became necessary, not an optional for schools. So it actually gave us a huge boost. Now, it presented other challenges for us, but it provided a huge opportunity for us to grow and to uh, adapt our platform. Um, <clears throat> others uh, have been faced with the opposite situation where, no, the closure uh, of businesses, physical businesses, uh, let's say, uh, presented a huge struggle. Now, providing those and adapting is usually necessary. Uh, so yeah, it could be, it could go both ways. The externalities are usually either in your favor or not, but in any case, you have to be agile enough uh, to twist and turn and adapt. Beautifully said, Muhammad. Um, I think this would refer back to what I said earlier, um, not being emotionally uh, connected to a business because more or less the minute we kind of always just fixate our mind that this is how my, how my business is and I'm not going to change it, you know, no matter the circumstances, this is where you set yourself a failure. And, you know, you don't give the chance or the flexibility to analyze the market and be able to um, adapt your business to the uh, to the situation right now, which kind of stops you from having the opportunity of um, succeeding. Uh, pivot and adaptation kind of uh, work very hand like hand in hand, where you kind of uh, look into the market, look at the situation, and try to analyze every step of the way to be able to kind of adapt your business through these circumstances, through the situations, and with it you never know. Um, even maybe you're doing very well, but due to the, um, the current situation, uh, an opportunity might present itself that will make you pivot and do better. Um, I think Hamad uh, agrees with me about um, TELP, which is one of the success uh, stories. Uh, me and Hamad graduated uh, from Flat Six Lab as well. So um, TELP is a graduate who started off as a platform. They've done very, very well for themselves. And eventually what they did, they pivoted into a even successful business. So this by itself tells you guys, um, don't make the mistake of holding on and clinging to your ideas, you know, and uh, thinking that, you know, this is the only thing that we're gonna work. Be able to listen, to analyze, to remove yourself from the business and, you know, kind of try to look at the business from another perspective so that you can um, build better opportunities that will help you serve the problems that's going on and serve yourself as a startup. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, now um, let's say um, since we have so many students and the, um, the attendees, um, let's say when it comes to someone starting a business, we know it's not an easy journey. We know it has its ups and downs. So let's say in terms of um, what, what you think is the character, some characteristics that, or some important um, traits that, that somebody who's going um, through this path should have, or um, that will also help them when it comes to um, solving problems and pivoting like you mentioned and so on. So if we could a little bit shed light on what you believe are good characteristics for somebody who's going um, through this path and reflecting from your own experiences as well. Before Muhammad, you go, I would just add one last thing um, regarding to the pandemics and situations like this. Uh, statistics shows that in every crisis, more startups show up. You know, there was, they, it gives birth to more um, opportunities. It gives birth to more um, businesses that come, that arises from every um, the crisis. So this is the time where people could take advantage, you know, like and see what kind of problems are, well, like, are happening and the opportunities that kind of like arise out of it. And it's well done. 
Thanks, Hamad. Uh, no, I completely agree. Uh, by the way, Uber, uh, Airbnb, um, uh, all, all the rest came out from the financial crisis uh, in 2008 and beyond that. So uh, we'll, we'll see a lot probably coming out from this one. Um, but yeah, just going back to, you know, Victor Asra's um, question uh, about the, the traits, uh, and there are so many, there, there are so many. Um, the entrepreneurial path is not an easy one. Um, it's very, very frustrating uh, at times, but on the opposite end, very rewarding. Um, so just keep that in mind when you get in. You, 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 on the one end, it's not all rosy and people say, oh, I work for myself and I'm the boss. It, it doesn't really work that way. The, it gives you more pressure than it does um, otherwise. But at the end, uh, you chart your own path. And then eventually, if you take the right path, it's very rewarding. Uh, but again, in terms of traits, it's basically one, uh, the one word. Usually, I focus more, more on that. It's just if you believe in your idea, and you have to, uh, Hamad mentioned passion. You have to be passionate about it. This is not something that you just create for the sake of money. Uh, money should not be the end goal. Uh, it's solving a problem that you see is worth solving. That, that should be your main aim. Money will be dictated by the market and the market will decide how much uh, it's worth. Uh, but believing in the idea, having the passion for it, and then the perseverance. Because, as I said, the first year, two, or even three years before you kind of settle in and know exactly uh, what you're doing, uh, it's a very, very frustrating road. Uh, and perseverance, I would say, is the main trait anyone should have. You don't have that, everything else will fall apart. I'm um, listening to you, and I'm, um, I'm one of the people that was um, kind of, um, how, let me say it, you know, I, I don't want to say fooled, but, you know, I was uh, sucked in with the, the glamorous idea of entrepreneurial, uh, the entrepreneurial life, right? You get to see it um, on the, like, the social medias, and um, they get to tell you, you know, they they drive these fancy cars, you know, they're always uh, traveling, going to these fancy hotels. You know, guys, it, you could do and become whatever you want to, to be. But as Pama said, it's a step-by-step -step process. And don't fall into the lie that the minute you decide on becoming an entrepreneur, you know, you, you, that would kind of transform your life into the successful uh, money-making um, uh, guru that kind of just have money raining down on him or her. So uh, perseverance is the best word I would say, and I'll underline it a couple of times because you need that and you need resilience. Um, you know, these two are gonna be your um, your driving force when it comes to um, starting a business. Um, you're gonna be the HR. You're gonna be the decision maker. You're gonna be um, the guy that kind of um, um, runs behind uh, companies, payments, every single thing, you're going to do everything yourself. And if you're not passionate, and this is something that you literally look forward to do on a daily basis or wake up to, um, to just work on it um, every single day, it, it might get boring. It might get uh, very hard. Some days you feel like you don't want to wake up, um, you know, just you get tired. But the word reward uh, that Hamid used, the, the word behind anything that you do and the impact it has is priceless. Um, you know, just uh, let me talk on like um, based on my business, you know, we work on making people's lives better. And my services is investing into coaches because me as a coach, I worked with hundreds of uh, people. Imagine, um, the 300 people that I have, investing more effort into them, how many more people we could help, you know? Um, as many as there are health coaches out there, you know, you still see the, um, the, um, the illnesses, the uh, diabetic numbers, the overweight uh, numbers, the obesity, they are still rising. 
So, you know, like this by itself gives me, um, let's say, the honor of actually serving a cause with my business, which makes me not money driven, but a cause driven business. Yet the money will come. This is something that you all need to understand. The minute you believe in your business, work on it, surround yourself and uh, surround yourself with the right people. And if you see yourself not having, knock on people's doors like Hamad or myself or Dr. Isra, which would get you to meet mentors. These mentors might help you refine your skill set, refine the things that you had in mind and make you a right person who might be able to drive the business. You learn about your strengths and this is where you might be able to fill in or bring people that will complement you. And this is where you might be able to bring up a startup that serves a proper purpose and you might reach your success. Yes, beautifully said. Um, if, um, I may ask um, the audience, uh, guys, if you would like to ask the speakers, I don't want to keep going. And uh, I mean, if you have anything in particular that you would like to ask the speakers, please um, raise your hand uh, or you can um, write it in the uh, messages. We have a mess. Uh, we have um, a question from um, Dr. Asma. Um, she, she particularly wants to ask about uh, when it comes to HR. And um, I'm sure that, um, I mean, Mohammed, you had your company beforehand, like you had um, VTech um, solutions going on for a um, good number of years. And then um, again, so the question is here, what type of HR correction that um, you had to do during the pandemic, if there was any? Yeah, I, I can see, I think, uh, Dr. Asra, uh, as, uh, Asma asked quite a few questions that were all related to the pandemic uh, in general. Um, yeah, I, I can take you through my journey, um, but, uh, but I've been speaking to entrepreneurs and business owners all over Bahrain, and e each one had their own journey and difficulties, and they had to deal with it differently. So I can only speak for mine. Um, but in, in terms of uh, HR, our particular situation, which was basically we were in an industry both on the technology side, first of all, through my first company uh, and delivering digital projects uh, and through Spring Ring, which was basically at the time the pandemic uh, started, it actually solved a big problem uh, that schools straight away faced. We actually did not have to do much HR correction in this uh, case because I needed all the hands <laughs> on deck and every single person that I could have in my office and working. Of course, we had to have a different HR correction. So as soon, two weeks before actually, um, in Bahrain, we started, which was around the end of Feb. We actually had to put out a five-pager policy on how to work from home, uh, the etiquettes of working from home, uh, all the procedures and what we expect people to do when working from home, because we actually closed the office for almost four months uh, from uh, beginning of March of last year all the way up until end of uh, July or something. Uh, my memory doesn't serve me well <laughs> but uh yeah we had to do a lot of that in terms of just keeping morale working from home presented its own challenges between people uh the, you know uh, we've heard these days of the zoom fatigue uh people are not excited about attending meetings on zoom they want the human interaction they want the physical interaction with people so just keeping morale up having these non-business Zoom meetings where people would just, you know, talk to each other and uh, basically try as much as we can create the environment that we had in the office uh, online, which you never can, but as much as we can uh, provide that semblance. So that was a, a big shift in HR. We didn't have to overly correct in terms of firing people. Uh, actually, we've grown the team over this period. Uh, so we've had to hire more people. Uh, we have to thank a bit the University of Bahrain for providing us with the flow of <laughs> graduates <laughs> coming in. So that's good. Um, but 
so it, this was basically uh, just in general in terms of HR, uh, but other things in terms of uh, did it provide advantages for us in terms of cost cutting? Uh, not much, actually. Uh, maybe are my employees were happy with not spending money on uh, fuel to come to work or buying new clothes or something like that <laughs> or spending on lunch every day <laughs> in the office. So maybe it affected them. But for us as an office, as a business, it was not uh, as much of a cost cutting scenario that we had. Uh, but again, I just have to emphasize again, every single business has its own uh, problems to deal with, or sometimes they had good problems to deal with like we did. Uh, we had exceeding demand for our product. Uh, so again, every situation is different, but it go, takes us back to the first thing you mentioned. Uh, we have to adapt very quickly to changing circumstances. We also have Nasser. Nasser, would you like to speak to the speak uh, to our guests? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, am I lagging or uh, shall I uh, like, uh, connect to another thing? So, it's fine. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question, this, uh, but it's a bit like on a personal level. Uh, what was your motive basically to work hard on like establishing your basically uh, uh, firms? And uh, especially, especially like in a very negative uh, environment under the, uh, you know, like the environment of COVID-19 and how it was like people were all like basically turning down instead of turning people up and trying to motivate them. They were actually like, like basically, you no, know, stay at home, do nothing. Uh, so what was your motive during that uh, period? And I have uh, another part of uh, the another part of my is basically uh, on those days that felt really hard and like there were like no chance for that. You got that motive. Uh, what what like you did basically to like basically navigate through the, that period basically. And that's that. Thank you. Thank you, Nasser. Hamad, if you want to take it, or should I? <laughs> I don't mind it. Uh, so just to, uh, to sum it up, so um, Nasser, the first question you mentioned about the negativity around us and the negative environment, how did we were able to uh, um, go through and build our businesses? Um, and what kind of gave us the drive uh, to to uh, continue working on our businesses? And the second question, um, could you clarify, uh, Victor Sra, what was it again? Um, I believe again it is related to that. What made you keep going even through these difficult times? That what what kept you going, and like you both mentioned earlier, that perseverance and um, just do what you are passionate about. Um, first of all, um, let me talk uh, my, about myself and my business. Um, as I said, like I'm very passionate, like um, of what I do, and I'm very. Um, can you hear me, guys? Yes, Hamid. Okay, sorry, that court froze. Anyway, so um, um, I'm like my business is cause driven, as I mentioned earlier. So um, we're serving a cause and we're trying to make a difference and impact uh, people's lives. So this by itself, this uh, humanitarian um, uh, purpose behind our business, uh, it kind of drives me every single day into investing more time and effort to see the change behind everything I do. Um, again, it's my line of profession as well, and that's why um, I'm passionate about it. And with it, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a people's person. I'm a very social person. Um, it gives me the opportunity to meet people like you, to meet experts. And so I love. So that kind of helps me keep on going and building on to the business and it makes it easier for me to uh, to persevere and uh, continue. But if um, if I may say, um, in regarding to the mentors, why did I mention that you guys uh, maybe need mentors? 
I keep myself teachable. And no matter how much I think I know, I always go back to people and, you know, I keep on mentioning, guys, this is some problems that I might be facing, even when I don't feel emotionally um, um, stable at times, you know, like, because this is very, very demanding. And sometimes you might push yourself beyond your own capabilities and turn out to be burnt out. So, you know, like sometimes you just forget, forget about yourself. So these happens, and that's why also as a health coach, I actually have people to coach me. You know, this by itself keeps me at a balance, keeps them reminding me of the importance of, you know, that you need to invest as equal time and effort onto the business, same as on yourself, so that you would be the driving force behind your business. If there is no you, there is no business. So you are as important and you are the main asset behind the business so make sure you surround yourself with the right people shut down your eyes ears and nose as well from all these negativity that might come you know social media kind of tries to drives a lot of uh, the hype that's going on and now the hype is the pandemic so you know you could filter what you see so that it doesn't affect you negatively and this by itself would create a bubble behind you or let's say an environment for you a healthier um, environment for you to be able to focus on what's really important. Uh, thanks, Hamid. No, that was really well said. <clears throat> I uh, couldn't have said better, so I, I don't have much to add here. But uh, one thing I would just wanted to mention, being an entrepreneur is probably one of the loneliest uh, professions. Uh, no one will understand what you go through as an entrepreneur. Uh, not your family, not your friends, uh, definitely not um, employees. Um, so at the end of the day, you have to be your own cheerleader, right? You have to find it within yourself to kind of push yourself forward because uh, the only people, and one other thing is, uh, again, going back to what Hamad said, is surround yourself with the people that will help you out on this journey with other entrepreneurs, with people who understand your struggle. Find yourself a mentor who has been who has been through uh, all of this because the issue is you're gonna have your own unique problems. You're gonna face challenges that no one will understand but you. Um, and you'll be basically doing everything. Um, you know, you'll be uh, taking care of finance, doing HR issues, building your product, taking care of design, doing marketing, building partnerships, uh, all of that falls uh, on your head. And ultimately kind of the thing, what they say, the buck stops with you always. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, you have to find it within yourself, be your own cheerleader and surround yourself with people who understand what you're going through. I'll just add one last thing. Uh, thank you, Hamid, for that. Um, um, there's a quote that changed my life, guys, and um, I live the, as or have it as my motto. Um, it goes like, uh, support doesn't always come from familiar faces. So don't be surprised if God places strangers in your life to take you to higher places. Mm -hmm. That itself may like revolutionized my mind that support wouldn't always come from my first circle, second circle, or even third circle. I have strangers that are working with me in the company that I trust maybe beyond people that I knew for years. And I met mentors that care for me and are happy for me, you know, just for me, not even for the business. It's just because they want to see Hamid happy. Um, surround your, like yourself with this kind of people because these, these are the main pillars who are going to hold you strong when things uh, might get hard and when the more you your people, it makes it worth the while because the startup uh, community or the entrepreneurial life, the journey is what matters. The journey is the most exciting thing. So if you don't enjoy it, trust me, it's, it's gonna be, um, it's boring, it's gonna be hard and um, you're not be able to continue. Thank you guys. Uh, we have Sra al Blushi. She's asking, what's your greatest fear in your business? And yesterday I also had a session with the students from the College of IT 
they were also kind of some of the questions they were asking that what will make us know that all right i'm passionate about this and i really believe in it and i want i want to do this as my business however how would i make sure that um, people will accept it how would i make sure um, that it will be successful and again we go back to the um, thing that you were talking in the beginning that it's not just your passion it's not just what you believe in but also what customers required so if we can um, shed light here when it comes to the fear and how she also um, uh, Sarah is also asking how do you manage fear when it comes well uh, I can uh, just mention by the way my story they always tell people take a leap of faith um, I, I don't necessarily agree completely with that yes it is a leap of faith but it has to be a very calculated one. I think what you, uh, Dr. Asra, take the students through when it comes to the process of building a business, whether it's from you know the ideation stage all the way up to building your business and your product, uh, these are, first of all, uh, very important. You, you need to learn uh, all these things before. Um, I used to be a banker. Um, I used to make a lot of money doing that uh pretty much having a job from nine to five five days a week and it was very comfortable uh so the question is yes uh, what takes someone from that into basically not knowing if they're gonna get paid end of the month uh, and for the first five months i wasn't getting paid at all <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, yeah moving from a full-time employee business that in itself has its own fears. And I struggled with the idea for uh, a couple of months uh, before taking that leap of faith. But again, you have to have, at least do your homework, uh, build you know, uh, in your head um, an idea that you think is worth pursuing, uh, you're passionate about, and then also validate that idea before you go all in. You know, a lot of people, start their businesses even before they let go of what they had before. Uh, you can't run a business, this misconception I have to kind of put out there, you won't be able to run a business and be a full-time employee at the same time, somewhere else. That's not gonna work. Yes, you can build a pet project, you can build a passion project, if you will, uh, for extra money on the side, but you're never gonna be building a business for it. Uh, so yes, you have to take the leap of faith eventually. Uh, getting over the fear only works if you actually do the groundwork necessary before you take that leap of faith. You know, validating your idea, getting the right feedback, building a product uh, that works, or just in general, doing what everyone needs to do before they jump all in. Um, managing fear, uh, that's something for Hamad to tell us about. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mohammed, for that. Uh, um, just let me rephrase uh, fear for all of you guys. Uh, fear is, you know, the fear of the unknown, uncertainty. Um, the more we kind of educate ourselves, and exactly what Mohammed said, you know, having the right uh, study or due diligence to learn more about what you want to do reduces the fear because now you have the tools, have the resources from that uncertainty you can work right now it makes it a bit easier let's say all of you guys you know i'll use you guys as an example before going to university we always have that fear of you know like starting something new you know and that is some something um, that you kind of could re relate to uh, when it comes to um, a startup it's starting something new something we don't know how it's going to be um, but the minute you go and get familiar with the university, meet new people, make friends, what happens is things start getting familiar. Things start getting easier. And this is something that would help you a lot when it comes to uh, starting a business or starting uh, your entrepreneurial journey because it works the same way. Get familiar, educate yourself, do your due diligence and learning as much as you can so that when you go face to face with the uh, with uncertainty you have the
maybe um, face it with a little bit more of confidence. So this is like my uh, two cents when it comes to um, uh, to fear and when it comes to mental fitness, guys. Mental fitness is something that is really, really, really the most um, underlined uh, muscle that people don't train, especially entrepreneurs. You get to see a lot of people coming in with a great idea and they're thinking that, you know, like I got it all, let me try to do this, but they don't work on themselves. Working on yourself is as important as your skill set and the, the, the funding that you have, the team that you have. You need to work on yourself to be able to withstand anything that come, any hit that you might, uh, you might uh, face you are able to kind of turn the other cheek and you'd be like, you know what, is there more? Um, this is something that you need to train yourself so that we'll be able to face uncertainty and the, the, the darkest days that might come and you'll be able to stand within these, um, um, these challenging times and you would succeed definitely. Inshallah, inshallah. Now, anybody from the audience would like to ask um, further questions? As, as young entrepreneurs, um, maybe, um, let's say, um, from in the audience, we have students from different colleges, from the university, and they might be, um, like, I get this question uh, quite often, that what are the skills that we need in order to be able to start a business and succeed in that. Um, some people might think that, all right, I need IT skills. Now, it might be, yes, depends on the type of business you are in. And of course, sometimes you, you always can have co-founders and you can have employees who could uh, take care of that part for you. So when it comes to, let's say, um, I wouldn't call them skills, but let's say, um, if you were to mentor someone and um, you want to give them like a piece of advice um, when it comes to something that you really believe it's very important for anyone who's starting um, going to, to this path. Now, what we do through the program here is that we are equipping students with some of the skills that um, are not really covered in curriculum. And we are opening doors for them to be able to beat uh, people like yourselves um, to learn from their experiences. And again, it depends what type of business they uh, choose and what, what passion they have and so on. So um, if you were to give someone, um, let's say a piece of advice when it comes to starting their businesses, something that you really um, think is very important it could be related to challenges, it could be related to traits, it could be related to the environment itself. Um, what would that be? Uh, one, one thing I have to mention is uh, don't uh, get sucked in too quickly into the allure of uh, being an entrepreneur. Um, it, it's not something uh, that you want to jump straight into. I always tell people, <clears throat> if you can't be managed, then you can't manage. Uh, you have, to, sometimes I say, you might want to take um, a couple of years even, uh, get into the market, see how it is, um, work for someone, um, take a job, uh, j just do something that you, it gives you a sense of how the dynamics of the market work. Uh, one thing we struggle a lot with uh, students coming in, and I've had through my company over the past, say, nine to 10 years, uh, I've had maybe over 30, 40 people uh, from university coming in, whether it's from Bahrain University or others in Bahrain, uh, coming in. Uh, the, the a big thing that usually they're shocked with is that it's nothing like university not the projects, not the way they operate, not the relationships, nothing else. It, it, it's very different. The marketplace is different. Uh, the way you deal with people in the private sector is, is completely different to your studies and university. Um, so those things take a couple of years, understand 
the environment because the marketplace is part of the environment that eventually as an entrepreneur you'll be operating in get a better understanding of that um, learn from people because you'll be managed by a manager or two or three or four <laughs> depending on how big the organization you end up working for uh, learn from those managers build relationships uh, so all these things are important uh, i know there's a lot of talk about entrepreneurship and startups and even Bahrain in general. In Bahrain, we hear a lot about this. Uh, so it's good to build the skill sets for this, but don't jump in straight away without also acquiring real life skills. Uh, but just going back to one thing I wanted to add to that Hamad mentioned, which is really important I want to emphasize on, uh, the mental health part. Uh, mental health is a totally ignored uh, part of our health. Uh, it's basically, if it's not physical, then it doesn't exist. Right. And a lot of people approach, uh, health that way. If I can't feel it in my body, then it doesn't exist. No, uh, I would say mental health is, I would say more important than physical. Uh, you will face a lot of problems during, uh, the building of your business. Uh, and not having the mental uh, health capacity to take you through it is going to be a challenge. So, yes, taking care of yourself is definitely something I totally agree with Hamad on. Thank you, Hamad, for that. Um, I would like to say that um, being curious is one of the best traits uh, you, might, uh, you might have right now at this young age. You know, you have the time, and I mentioned this in the first uh, um, uh, uh, webinar, or you want to call it the session that we had, you know, use your time wisely. I wish someone told me this before, but use your time wisely to not only focus on your studies, but build skill sets. There are millions of websites that offer free skill building um, certifications, diplomas, that, and things that you could learn now to enhance yourself, find things that you love. I'm sure, like most of you guys, some of you kind of got into university um, based on the the um, the idea that they were given. You know, used uh, you joined um, a certain major because someone told you, and um, you know, some some people are influenced by their parents, and some people are influenced by you know what's uh, becoming trending right now. So find what resonates with you. Find something that you deeply love and you could do that on the side. Yeah, and you could actually find any kind of certification that you would do on the side that will build your skill set. Um, with that being said, maybe you're passionate about the field. Go work as an intern. Utilize this time to work as an intern. Um, this will build your um, professional life, guys. So you have your you know, like normal life, your personal life and you have your professional life, both are separate personalities. You need to find that personalities. You need to find that uh, thing about you that would help you know more about what you like. And this would only be, uh, this will all happen if you give yourself the chance to explore, to work, be under people, um, learn more about the fields that you want, learn from different bosses. Um, and people that um, our environment that say that you're going to be put in. Um, Hamid mentioned something that's really important, the market. The market is a monster. No matter how much you think you've done your studies, you've prepared yourself, trust me, the market might flip everything the other way. So that's why you need to be able to withstand that, be able to educate yourself, to be able to remove yourself from the business, when um, the market makes you realize, you know what, you started wrong, but you need to pivot right now. You know, all this will come because from the experience that you gave yourself um, before you jumped into um, starting your own business. Um, being a, an employee as a start has, has its benefits, but if you're fortunate enough to be uh, born into a family that is business oriented, your family might be your mentors. Learn from them, ask them questions, and sometimes they might not believe in you, and this happens um, a lot. It's okay. It's okay. Find the people that believes in you. 
you know, you are here in this program specifically for a reason, because you know there is passion within you. You know that you have a lot of potential within you, and you want to find that. So you utilize the uh, the connections that Dr. Asra has. If you want any one of us, me or Dr. Muhammad or anyone that you might see, ask Dr. Asra if she can get you connected. You know, like we are always having this open door policy where we want people to ask us. You know, in these kind of webinars, ask the question, guys. We're we're being transparent. We we, we come here open hearted, so that we give you the struggles, the things that. We don't show on our social medias or our on pages or talk about it openly. Um, like just last month, I was in the um, I was going through a very hard uh, phase, like at in February, just last month, literally. And I wrote something that Hamad mentioned as well, which is it's uh, entrepreneurial life is very lonely. You know, I am fortunate enough to have a lot, a lot, a lot of people in my life, but at this given point. I didn't have enough people around me to support me within this uh, journey because they don't understand. You know, I chose this path and they're never going to see things face to face. They get to see the highlights. We mentioned most of the highlights in the last lecture and people are like, wow, Hamad, you've done great. You're doing this. But how much did it take for me? You know, it took a lot for me. So again, if it wasn't for the resilience, it wasn't for the perseverance, if it wasn't for the mental, uh, mental fitness and the, the time and effort that I invested in myself, I would have been, you know, like in, in that state still. You know, I wasn't, I won't have the mental capacity to invest more into my business and help it grow and find new things to be able to help it, uh, help the business prosper. Um, that's why I surround, with my, uh, surround myself with proper people that I know. If I feel and I don't feel myself today, I could just go and talk to someone, ventilate. If I feel like the business is kind of um, not going this, the way that I expected, I go to people and kind of talk to them. And the last thing I would want to say, if you are passionate um, in, in, let's say, my field, you know, come work with me. You know, I'm, you're not going to work for, for me. You're going to work with me because you are doing this for yourself and you're helping me out. So with that being said, find the passion that you kind of think you're, you're, you could res uh, resonate with or relate to and work in that field for some given time and see is that, what is, is that your calling or go work with Muhammad yeah, and, and you, might, you might find your calling there or even working in a career, guys. Career, some people are born to be entrepreneurs. Some people are just born to be career driven. Uh, people, so it, it's not always um, it's not always uh, right um, that I feel like I want to be an entrepreneur, and this is for me. You never know how good and how much you could grow into a company because that was something you are good at and you haven't found it out. So you only be able to find all that if you put yourself in that position where you are exploring and working and trying to find something that you love. Thank you. Um, and I think um, you you have already answered um, Ahmed's question when he's asking about that. Um, should we work um, in a company before um, getting into a career uh, into an entrepreneur entrepreneurial path? So again, like the speaker said, the experience that you are going to gain in a company, in a startup company, in in different um, let's say parts in your life. These will all build up your uh, personality and of course all of these experiences will help you later on now we are we have time um, only for this last question we have fatma uh, fatma is asking educating um, yourself before starting the business may take um, too long maybe years um, now will this um, delay you and i think this also relates to something that students always ask that I have an idea, I want to keep it for myself, I'm not going to talk about it. And then they take years before starting to get, let's say, the skills required for them to start that particular path. And maybe by the time they are ready, their idea is already out. And um, there is always this struggle that we, we hear this from students um, um, too often when it comes to okay 
I'm going to take time to get ready to be an entrepreneur. And at the same time, for example, if I have an idea, then my idea is gone. So it's like two things <laughs> against each other. So what could you um, um, say for that? Do you mind me going first? Um, I had three starting points in my life, I would say. Uh, I worked in telecommunication banking and a couple of PR and marketing uh, fields before um, joining uh, the Ministry of Interior. So I worked, um, the last work, uh, the last job I had, I got um, a junior manager role, but I changed that to go into the Ministry of Interior just because they, and there, there was something that I signed on and it didn't happen. So like from a junior manager, I became a cadet. So I started, you know, from scratch um, with one fourth of the salary that I was, uh, I was getting. Um, I started then um, as a officer until I got to like seven years down the line. And eventually I quit my job and became an entrepreneur. So that being said, um, I started with just a little bit of uh, knowledge because every path or let's say every phase of my life came with a new starting point um, that I kind of put enough effort into learning and um, educating myself so that I'll be able to um, start this journey. Um, I am 34 years old uh, this month. Uh, I, I just turned 34 and my business started last year. So I was, you know, I quit my job at 30 uh, when I was 30 and eventually started my business just last year. So is it too late? No, it's never too late. Um, I kind of uh, want to say that, you know, this is why I mentioned earlier to educate yourself right now, because you have the time now, you know, and um, if you have an idea that you want to, um, to, to uh, establish, there is a couple of things um, that I would like to say um, find out more about hackathons. You know, hackathons kind of put you to the test if you're able to actually uh, put together your business plan, put it together a small team, and with it, you might, uh, you might see if, okay, do I have what it takes to start this? It puts you under the right pressure to execute on your idea. And a lot of us either wait too long because I'm not ready yet, and this is why they lose the, the opportunity. They don't take action. And some people just start too fast, you know, before educating themselves. You need to find that sweet spot in between. And that's why I always say, um, at least have someone, someone that compliments you, try to put bounce back ideas. At least both of you, you will validate the idea if it's something that we want to start off and put it in action. So it's never too late, Fatma. And trust me, Everything in life happens for the right reasons, um, but don't stop yourself and take so much time and be like, oh, uh, my idea happened to happen, where the truth is you didn't take action. You know, I totally agree. Um, uh, I also didn't start straight after uni. Uh, I think a lot of people look at uh, the huge success stories, for example, of Facebook, Google, and the rest, where it's like, you know, oh, they left school and they started their business. But that's uh, a very, very rare case. And they're what we call basically outliers. Uh, it's things that normally in life don't happen. <laughs> the, the failures of that are much, much more often than those successes. But we tend to only celebrate the successes and forget about all the failures. Um, at the, the same time, um, again, if someone says, well, I have this idea and I want to go straight in because otherwise someone else will take it. Well, it's not only about the idea as well, because if you don't have the knowledge on how to execute and run this idea, then you're bound to fail and then your idea will be executed by someone else. It's basically kind of a, a situation where you have to decide yes you're not going to be learning forever and not executing anything but at the same time you can't execute without the knowledge uh, but by the way a lot of the knowledge you acquire anyways you acquire on the job the life is your best coach right at the end of the day uh you will learn on the job it's just that when we say educating yourself 
is getting the ground and the foundations of your knowledge there, then you uh, keep on learning. Uh, and I always say you have to be a lifelong learner. Uh, you can't stop learning. Uh, things will change every day. And especially in this day and age, you, uh, you see things change exponentially. Uh, whereas, uh, for example, technology, uh, where it was, we still remember the days where we didn't have mobile phones, let alone smartphones. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they basically we're, we're in a situation what now where things change really really fast and you'll have to keep on learning as you go anyways uh it's just when we say educate yourself first is get the groundwork there and then build from there one last thing uh Hamad, just to talk about to that um most programs that you guys join kind of gives you the right education towards the entrepreneurial journey so they'll give you every single um, thing that you need for, from the ideation stage until the execution stage. Um, so this is something that I would encourage you guys to test yourself by putting yourself into these uh, programs and just putting your um, idea to the test. And I love that, I mean, like we always um, learn as we go. It's the best uh, coach because you know, like life teaches you something that you would never consider it or maybe put into consideration. So keep yourself teachable, guys. Um, Dr. Asma, uh, Dr. Asra, I think Asma kept on raising her hand a couple of times. Really? I think she wanted to say, but maybe she was shy. All right, sorry, Dr. Dr. would you like, I think she typed a question in here. Um, she I've seen the hand coming up and going. Wallah. <laughs> Okay, let me just ask her um, last question she asked, which has to do with the government support that you receive um, to start your businesses. Um, let's see what kind of support you have um, received and how you benefited from that. Well, uh, I can speak for something, which is uh, the fact that having started quite a long time ago, well, relatively in the startup world, I'm considered someone who started a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, no, I've been around for nine years now. Uh, so the government support has been increased massively over this time. Uh, we went from a situation where basically you're on your own. Uh, you know where you to get a CR, go get a CR. That was a, a pain in itself. Uh, and then, you know, navigating through all the regulations and you didn't have anywhere to go and you had to kind of figure things out for yourself. Um, the, and that's just on the support side of, you know, guidance and telling you how to do things uh, and everything was manual at the time. So you didn't have a system online to do anything. Uh, and by the way, I'm not talking even about 30 years ago. This was just 10 years ago, right? 10 years ago, things were very, very different than they are now. So I would say the government is investing a lot into, uh, the technical technological advancement of all our processes and systems. Things can be done pretty much all online now, uh, almost. If everything is in order, then you can take care of all of that. Uh, responsiveness has been increased massively. Uh, we get responses from government officials now, sometimes within a day. Yes, I'm not saying there aren't glitches here and there. <laughs> you'll face those <laughs> and you'll struggle with them, but that has uh, improved a lot. Uh, but then you also have uh, the other support, which is the monetary support. Uh, uh, through Tamkeen and the, all the programs that they have. Now, uh, I usually tend to mention this to a lot of people. Do not go into your business with the support in mind. The support is, as the word says, it's supporting you in your business. It shouldn't be part and parcel of your business, right? I, I see some people say, coming to me and telling me, well, I wanna start a business. I have this much, it's not enough but Tamkin will pay the rest. Well, the problem is if you don't have enough and you haven't put enough yet and you're counting on Tamkin, well, things change every day. You have to, you can build your business on the government being your partner, right? Uh, you have to build a business uh, by yourself. Any support is welcome. But yeah, no, things have changed massively. I would just say the banking system is not in your favor. So, if you're depending on getting uh, corporate loans or, or business loans from the government, from banks in Bahrain, you can pretty much forget about that. 
um, uh, our banks here are not really supportive when it comes to startups. Uh, so yeah, there's that part, but otherwise I think in, from a government perspective, uh, because banks are a private sector, of course, but from a government perspective, I think uh, the change in the past 10 years has been massive. Uh, doesn't mean we can't further improve, but yes, um, th there's a lot of help that you can find along the way. Uh, to it, um, the interest into the entrepreneurial life or let's say uh, entrepreneurship or the startup commu uh, community has been driven massively by the government. You get to see uh, EM, EDV, you know, and how much they're trying to support. And you have the hope funding um, that was just talked about just recently. And some of the amount from that is going to be allocated for the uh, startups. Um, so the country have seen how much, especially from the pandemic, that the startup community or the startups in general have um, revived the um, revived the econ economy and how important it is. So yes, there is a lot of interest. The Crown Prince kind of has that uh, in his interest that he wants to invest also into startups. So the government is keen on supporting startups. It's only about you um, asking um, the right channels, trying to find uh, the right answers. And we have Tim Keen, yes. Tim Keen is on the second stage or the growth stage only. It's not the capital. It's not on the, like for to start a business. Um, other than that, definitely I agree with Mohammed. Things are much easier. Um, I wanted to start up a restaurant uh, a while back and it took me more than six months running behind people just to approve uh, literally a paper um, that was hidden in someone's desks. Um, so right now, everything's online. It's a matter of like one or two days, not months right now. So definitely, I, I salute the government on the, the, the gap they, they, they kind of uh, closed within a very short time. It made it so much easier for us. All right, thank you so much. We took... 13 minutes more from your time. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today. And I'm sure there are um, so many um, questions which we could um, take on, inshallah, um, on a later date. We are going to see Hamad again, and we wish, inshallah, to see um, Hamad with us. And if there is anything in particular that um, any one of you in the audience would like to um, ask this, uh, our speakers, um, I would inshallah share their contact um, email addresses with you um, for further. And of course, you can also uh, benefit from um, their experience when it comes to mentorship and so on. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the, for the audience, for your patience. And inshallah, we would um, take this on and would love to see our speakers again. Thank you so much. Most welcome. I really enjoyed this, Mohammed. It's a pleasure being on the panel with you, and thank you for the audience for being um, really interactive. This this is what's the purpose behind this, and please take this opportunity to make the best out of it. We are paving the path for you guys. You know, using everything that uh, we learned to make it bite sizes for you. So take advantage of that, and thank you, Astra, again for um, putting this together. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, everyone. And as uh, Dr. Asra mentioned, um, she can share our contact details uh, with you. And uh, if you need anything, uh, please get in touch. Inshallah. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.